ضيفنا او متحدث ما اعرف رقم كام عموما الاستاذ زياد جرار وهو خبير في التسويق والاتصالات هو موجد لبراند اسمه انسانيه يساعد الشباب على انهم ينظروا الى صوره من من وجهه من وجهه كبيره او ينظروا الى صوره بشكل كبير ليساعدهم على تطوير نفسهم وايضا الحرص على جوده يعني انفسهم وتطويرها وتحسينها Uh, do you have something to say? Uh, our next speaker is Ziad Jarar. He's the second last English speaker for today evening. And he's here to share an idea. He's also going to be launching something he hasn't done before with your, the audience here. He's going to be launching a brand in Sania. So before, I realize you guys have been a perfectly wonderful audience. You guys have really kept the energy going. And all the speakers who have come by have said, you know what, it's a beautiful audience. So please give yourselves a big hand here. <laughs> Everyone. Thank you, thank you. So can I please invite Mr. Ziad Jarar? Again, let's go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salli 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 Muhammad wa ala I want to thank everybody for uh, coming here today. It's really exciting. And I was going to get you to stand up, uh, but I think the previous act stole that. So what I'm going to ask you to do is the following. Usually I do a lot of seminars and lecturing on effective communication. Uh, public speaking, etc. And I always try to demonstrate the power that a speaker has to the audience. So allow me to demonstrate. If I can get everybody who's born between January and June 30th to put your hands forward. Just put your hands in front of you like this. Between January and June 30th. All right. Now everybody else between July and December, I want you to put your hands up in the air. Hands up in the air. All right. Now, on the count of three, I want everybody to wave your hands, all right? One, two, three. Watch what happens. Wave your hands, wave your hands, wave your hands. See, I told you that I'm going to demonstrate the power that I have to get you to do whatever I want. <laughs> but you guys, you guys still went ahead and did it. And that's the phenomenal part. The phenomenal part is, subhanAllah, the mind is an incredible tool. It's because you think that there's a point that I'm about to make. It's because you believe that what I'm telling you is me taking you on a journey and there's going to be a result at the end of it. But really, I just wanted you guys to wave at me because, you know, it's been <laughs> sitting for a while. But the power of the mind really is, is a very difficult thing to sort of look at. Because at the same time, while it's positive, while it's innovative, and while it's something that can really help us to propel and go forward in life, at the same time, it's something that can really break us down is something that can really block us and is something that can essentially end up ruining our lives. So the next question that I have, all the perfect people in the room, all the perfect people in the room, put your hands up. All the perfect people. That's interesting. No, put your hands up. All the perfect people. Who's perfect? Put your hands up. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I know some of you are going, put your hands down. Put your hands down. All right. All right, all right, all right. Now, all the sinners, all the sinners, put your hands up. All the sinners. Who is a sinner? Put your hand up. All right. Well, I'm glad we have a few honest people in the room. I'm glad. <laughs> He's getting trouble from his wife, I think, right? You guys can talk about that after. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the idea, subhanAllah, is that no matter what question I ask and you reply it or not, we're never really comfortable. We know we're not perfect. And those who answered, I understand you're trying to be, and it's great to feel that way. But we're not really perfect, because only God is perfect, right? But at the same time, some of us were uncomfortable to put our hands up. I think just a few of us, for the, for the sake of the joke, put their hands up, and they're sinners. But in fact, we're not comfortable to think of ourselves as sinners. And that could be a very, very dangerous, or what I believe, a blocking moment. So I'm here today to tell you something. I'm sick and tired of not knowing how good I have to be to be a good person. I'm sick and tired of not knowing how good I have to be to be a good Muslim. I'm sick and tired of people making me feel that I'm not the person that I want to be just because I'm a human being. At the end of the day, I'm just, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, so. Sin square. Everybody panics. Sin square. Sin square is a very dangerous place to be. And that's the power of the mind that I talk about. It's the ability for us to sort of 
step into an area that's not comfortable, that's not part of our regular routine, and what ends up happening is we get stuck there because society and other people who look at us tend to judge us before judging themselves. Sin Square is a place that nobody wants to be in, but we all end up stepping in it and once every once in a while. But yet, we try to be better people going forward. Now, there are very different types of sin, right? Adultery, ashirk, cheating, deception, drinking, sorcery, not paying zakah. And what happens is a lot of people, what do they do? They go through life, you know, and we try. I'm a good person, uh, you know, I take riba, I, it's okay, I take a bribe, it's business, it's not personal, all these things. And we tend to give size, yeah? We say, at least I don't create a big sin, I don't, I don't do a big sin. I do little sins, right? Well, <laughs> I want to challenge you today and suggest that a lot of people have said this before me, it's nothing new, that there's no such thing as a big sin and a small sin. That sometimes a person who steps in a big sin, it's okay, because at least he realizes that it is a sin. While others who go on there every day treating their maids very badly, uh, treating their drivers, cheating, lying, talking behind each other's back, all these what we call little sins, it's okay, or we, for, or we forget about them, is actually very dangerous. So what I want to suggest is that actually every sin is a sin. And in fact, let's remove the black and the gray from, from the uh, sins and look at things from a black and white perspective. Because the gray is almost as dangerous as the black itself. This is your life, this is my life, everybody's life has a path. And we're all going to go through this path. And as we try to be better people, as we sort of try to navigate through all these sins, we're bound to step into one. And we step into one for various reasons. Sometimes life gets challenging. Sometimes God, God is greater than everybody. He tests us. Sometimes, you know, things happen. But it's okay. It's okay to make a mistake. And the reason that we need to step out of that sin is because if we don't learn to forgive ourselves, if we don't learn to understand that we are human, if we don't learn to understand that it's okay, as long as you are on a good path, as long as you try better, as long as you work harder, that it's fine. Because if we don't have the ability to forgive ourselves, if we don't have the ability to forgive those around us, if we don't have the ability to judge ourselves before we judge someone else, then all we're going to end up doing is keeping people in the square. And the square will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And soon enough, you can't even see the white anymore. You can't step out of it because society won't let you, because your family won't let you. But most importantly, because you won't allow yourself. God says, the Hadith Qudsi, and I did this research, I'm not a religious expert. God says, God loves his worshippers to sin and repent. And if they didn't sin, God would replace them with those who did. So they may always ask for his forgiveness. And so God will forgive them. The idea is that if you sin, if you make a mistake, if you hurt someone else's feelings, you should go out and make sure you get that person's sort of forgiveness. But the greatest thing about God is that you don't need to cry. You don't need to write letters. You don't need to beg. You don't need to do any of that. God knows your intent. And if your intent is pure, and if your intent is good, then empower yourself, forgive yourself, and make sure you're able to move on. And hopefully everything else will be resolved. I'm launching a brand in Saniya. It's all about intent and looking about the idea from the big picture. I think sometimes we get so much into the details that we forget what the big idea is. Today's big idea is that I'm a sinner and we're all sinners, but it's okay. Because as long as our intent is pure, as long as we try and work harder, as long as we're able to move forward and try not to make some of the mistakes that we make, knowing we're still gonna make some more, that it's okay. God loves you and God loves us all. Thank you very much.